Hi, this is Brooks with Character Design Forge. I wanted to walk you through the creation of a comic page here from beginning to end. You may have seen my video, The Fastest Process for Making Comics in Photoshop, so that's in use here. And I wanted to show you everything from start to finish. So what did I do before I created this page? What was the prerequisite work? Well, first of all, I had the idea for a story, so this is the first page of a comic called Parcel. I created some concept art and character designs for the lead character, named Parton, and I made her both in the eventual uniform that she wears, but also her normal clothes, and I did a turnaround of this little single-wheel hovering moped of hers. I used this character sheet for reference, and that way I can keep the character fairly consistent across panels. I've also written the story, including the first page, and have an idea of what I would like to take place on the page, and I'll talk about that more. Since this takes place in a city setting, I gathered a little reference, mainly cities like Tokyo. I like the sleek and colorful vibe, also the fictional San Francisco from Big Hero 6. But I also made sure to include a classic look and the cobblestone of European cities. So I'll be using those to establish the backgrounds of my comic. The first thing that I'm doing here is thumbnailing. I'm zooming out with a large brush and really quickly mapping out the actions of the scene with really quick sketches. I'm basically putting down the ideas of words and characters, but I'm not even beginning to actually draw. This is just ideas. Next, I'm creating the panels with the selection tools, the rectangular marquee tool. You could of course use vector shapes as well, but these squares will be constraints for the panels. Next, I'm adding text. Since you want text to be readable, it's important to add it first and then create the art around it instead of squishing it in. Some of this is dialogue, like traditional comic text, and the rest is supposed to be a little bit like onomatopoeia or effect words mixed with something that's coming out of our main character's phone here. So I created it in a different font and added some glowing lines over top of it to make it a little bit more techy. This establishing shot of the city, I don't normally put so much detail into backgrounds, but since it is establishing, I thought it would be good to make this clear. And I'm just starting from the back to front, so lighter colors in the back, darker as you get closer to the front, keeping these lines straight for the most part. And the best way that you can make things look intricate or look like they are larger is by adding these tiny details. So I size the brush down and add walkways and windows and then I began to shade it and add shadows and lighting. Here I'm bringing my scooter over from the concept art. It's not really cheating since it is art that I've made for this purpose. And hard model objects aren't going to change fundamentally in structure, so I'm using that to start a quick sketch based on my thumbnail. Again, this isn't even the final sketch, it's just a little bit more detailed than that thumbnailing art. And I'm starting to map out what the background is going to look like a little bit more, since first I was just establishing the main character. Quick sketches of the close-up of this character, rearranging a little bit of the text. You'll also see me flipping the canvas a little bit to get fresh eyes on the artwork. So I want to talk now about the flow of this page, and it's especially important because it's the first page of a new story. So the way that it flows down is from a really wide shot. It's a whole city. And then it's down to a selection of the city that's highlighted by our main character, and then her close-up, and then just her face. So we're zooming in as we go. But you also have the information that a previous panel gave you, which is important. You couldn't have the last two panels without this street-level view. It would be kind of jarring to not know where our character is suddenly from the city down to her face. So that comes down to storytelling, giving your reader a good amount of information, not just assuming that they'll know where your character is. In this fourth panel here, I'm making the impact of the overdraft as if it's physically coming out of the phone at her. So that leads to this sort of wincing expression. So another thing about storytelling from the writing perspective, and this is something that I've worked hard on, is instead of being obtuse or assuming that people will be intrigued by a mystery if you just withhold vital information from them, the point of this first page 
is taking the first steps in making you care about Parton. And the next few pages will show you her situation specifically and some of the flaws that she has that have brought her to this point. But I wanted you to relate immediately to this problem. And I think most people relate to this at one point or another when you're searching for a job or you're first out on your own. Now this line of hers at the end uh, that I need this job is a recurring one through the comic and its meaning begins to change a little bit because more and more ridiculous things keep ha being asked of her in the context of this job and she agrees to it because, well, she does need the job. So this page sets up a physical setting, but it's also establishing the stakes for the character so you know why she does these things. And that's something my past comics haven't been amazing about, so I'm always trying to do better with storytelling. And that's resulted in this being the most normal story that I've done in recent memory, or at least it starts that way. I'm laying down the line art here, basically just taking the important information from my sketch. You can be as general with your sketch or specific, but really try not to waste too much time on the sketch because ultimately you won't be seeing a lot of that information with the line art. At least for this story, my plan is to keep the characters as line art and the backgrounds as lineless. And that's similar to a lot of 2D animation. It just keeps the focus on the dark lines that you see with the characters. Also with regard to the focus, the colors of the city behind her are harmonious, but they're also desaturated so that your eye isn't really competing. Even the other character in the foreground there on the left, uh, there has really desaturated colors so that he isn't competing for your attention or focus. I'm mainly using selection tools and paint to create these backgrounds and just enough flat colors to get an idea across. So I start the color in a way that I showed you in that fastest process for making comics video, uh, selecting the outside of the line art and then inverting it contracting the selection, filling that, and then brushing in the remaining parts. And then from there, I lock the layer and add the colors that I'd like to, at least for this story. I'm using color reference from my character sheet, which is good to get the local color, but it's also important to sometimes take into account the environment that your character is in and change the colors based on that. Uh, if your character is just the same color all the time, it, it may work, but consider if they're in a dark setting or the lighting around them, the color of the light, because that may change things. And I think I modify it just a little bit in this first page. I'm also using these big soft gradients to sort of assist the flow and focus of where your eyes should go, especially behind that text to just kind of make the text the focus in that area of the panel. Now from a camera perspective, if you were to track our character up close in these last two panels, the background would be going by fast and it would be out of focus. So I added some speed lines here to help with that. So I'm excited to keep working on this comic and I don't have specific plans for releasing it yet, but I will likely be giving priority to people supporting it on Patreon when I have that ready. Now I wanna be doing Patreon right. I want it to be consistent and worth it for the people that support me there. So you'll be hearing more about that in the future. I'm in the last weeks of my 100 Days, 100 Characters series, which is a little bit bittersweet. Uh, you can keep up with the entries there on Instagram, at Bagel Benison, and Learn Character Design. My course, which is a comprehensive character design education, is available now at learncharacterdesign.com. Let me know if you have any questions for future videos surrounding comics. Thank you for watching, and have fun creating.